Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Friday, July the 5th. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCBC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. The Vancouver Canucks have continued their trend of signing their RFA players to contracts. This time it is for Josh Levo. Canucks announced that they signed the restricted free agent to a one-year, $1.5 million contract. So... For those of you keeping at home, that means they just have Brock Besser of the forwards to sign. And we know that one might take a, a few more weeks, even a couple more months. We shall see. So again, Josh Levo signed to a one-year, $1.5 million contract. I think there's a really good contract. It makes sense. This is one that I actually predicted. I was way too high in the Tyler Mott contract. I actually thought that Mott, Levo, and Godobin would all get about 1.5. Or I said average of 1.5, actually. So Levo gets his 1.5. We know that Tyler Mott announced three days ago is getting 975000 so less than a million. And I expect Godobin to get somewhere between Mott's contract of 975 and Jake Vertan's contract that he signed last year of, of two years at 1.25. Given that Mott got a year, given that Levo got a year. I expect Dobin to get a year. I expect him, like I said, to fall somewhere between 975 and 1.25 million. So maybe we'll hear about that in the next couple of days. We shall see. But let's talk about Josh Levo. He came over to the Canucks in December, December 2018, trade with Toronto. Uh, Carsoni going the other way, and he has since been traded. I think Carsoni was in, including that Ottawa deal with CC, Toronto and Ottawa. Um, but we got, um, so in Josh Levo, we got a big forward who um, did really well, actually, when he was here. He got 18 points in 49 games. So 18 points in 49 games, and then, you know, that's uh, average out to extrapolate over a full, healthy 82-game season. That's 30 points a game. So that's good for a third-liner, and that's basically, I think, what where Josh Levo is best, uh, best put. You know, he played up on the top line and the second line at a couple times last year, depending on injuries to if Besser was hurt or if, uh, if Pedersen was hurt. Uh, actually, they really got to the top line. He definitely got to the second line, though. Played a lot with uh, Bo Horvat on that second line, uh, so-called second line. But at 30 points extrapolated, that's about a third. That's good for a third liner. And that's where I expect him to slot in, especially if you look at a top six, if uh, barring any other changes. If you look at a top six of Horvat, Pedersen, Besser, Levo... Uh, sorry, Horvat, Pedersen, Besser, Miller then likely Pearson and maybe a guy like Berchi, maybe, um, or even Jake Vertanen. No, I, I, I think it'll be Berchi at this point. Regardless, I think you have Josh Levo as a third-line winger. And I could see him playing and, and doing very well on a wing with, uh, you know, Jake Vertanen on the other wing and then, say, Adam Gaudet in the middle. That line would be very hard to play against. They'd have enough skill, enough speed with Jake and, and definitely uh, good on the boards. And that's what Josh Levo was good at. He's, uh, you know, a relatively big body, six foot two, 195. And what I noticed about him, he has really good hands, really heavy hands. So he had a heavy shot. Many of his goals, actually, of those 18 points, <clears throat> 10 were goals, eight were assists. I remember many of his goals were coming down the left wing and then doing a snapshot over the, you know, usually it's the goalie's left hand, um, uh, far side to to the to the open side over the, uh, the goalie's glove. I remember at, at least, you know, a few of his goals scored that way, especially late in the season, uh, a couple others from the slot. But it's usually a snapshot. You know, his wrist shot's okay, his slap shot's okay, but it's, it's Josh Levo's snapshot that is quite good. And that's what really impressed me most about him. He's got a good... Good enough hockey IQ, you know, he gets to the right spots. And whether and like I said, he's good on the board. So because of his bigger body and his good hands, he wins a lot of puck battles and he works quite hard. And, and those are all good things. You know, I basically described a prototypical third, third liner, right? Works hard, good on the boards, wins puck battles, and was able to pot a goal or two in once in a while. So I think it's a good, uh, good contract for Josh Levo. On the defensive side, he's okay. He's never going to be, you know, a Lady Bing, uh, or sorry, a Selkie finalist but uh, he, he's fine he's responsible enough um i don't know i didn't look up his corsi stats or his analytics but i think he did okay you know not a lot of connects did super well last year but i think he was fine i don't think he's a big concern that way so overall you know like i said uh hard on the puck good hands decent shot good vision works hard good on defense uh you, you know he's not never going to be your your top penalty killer he might get on their second line power play but overall if you can count on you know 15 16 minutes from him a night um maybe a little less i think that's good especially as a third liner so over, uh, overall i think the value is good and at one year the term is obviously very good you can't go any you can't go any shorter than one year and like a lot of these guys so uh, vertanen's contract now with being two years levo's contract mott's contract and likely godova's contract they're all going to come up at the end of next season. And then the Canucks will have some decisions to make. But it's a good chance for Josh Levo to prove his worth. 
uh, prove his medal, so to speak, and see if the Canucks will again, if he'll be an RFA again at the end of the next season. Same thing with Tyler Mott and, and Jake Vertan, and it'll be up to the Canucks to see what they want to do with them going forward. So, Canucks fans, we'd like to leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you below. Leave a comment. What do you think of this contract? Do you like the term? Probably. Do you like the value? 1.5? Do you think it's a little too high? Um, I, I think I think it's fair. I think it's very fair. That's what I predicted for Levo. And what do you think he brings to the team? Do you agree with my assessment of him as a as a solid third line winger? The Canucks also made um, a, a minor move yesterday. They signed Ford Justin Bailey, not Josh Bailey of the Islanders, but Justin Bailey, formerly of the Flyers, and before that drafted by the Buffalo Sabers back in 2013, I think it was, or maybe 2014. So we're getting. He's a big body. He's six foot four, two fifteen. So he's bigger than Levo. Um, decent speed for his size, but hasn't really. He only played sixty, sixty three games in the NHL over his five seasons, and last year he played eleven games with the Philadelphia Flyers, getting one assist in those eleven games. Otherwise, spent his time between Buffalo's farm team and Philadelphia's farm team because he came over from Buffalo earlier in the year. So I think we're getting a depth player here. We're getting someone who, if there's a a massive load of injuries, or if the Canucks really want to go for, with a different look, they can bring him up to the Canucks. But I, I'm giving the glut at forwards. I don't expect him to crack the lineup coming out of uh, you know training camp for sure. So he'll be a good, solid performer in Utica, and like I said, depth signing meaning he'll play in Utica regularly, and he could give the Canucks a different look if they ever decide to to call him up. So again, Justin Bailey signed by the Vancouver Canucks, uh, most recently of the Philadelphia Flyers. That was yesterday. So you uh, Canucks fans, you can comment on him. I actually don't know a lot about him. You can probably tell. I basically just said everything that I read in the press release. But if you want to talk about Justin Bailey as well and what he might bring to the team, I'd love to read it below. So we got Josh Levo signed today. Justin Bailey signed July 4 yesterday. And then Tyler Mott signed July 2, three days ago. And then, of course, the three D-men on July 1st. So that just leaves RFAs, Brock Besser, the big one, and then college uh, defensemen, Brogan Rafferty and Josh Tevis. Look for those guys to get one year or two year, probably one year deals at about a million each. And then look for Brock Besser to get a seven or seven and a half million that we've all been waiting for, hoping for, and speculating about for the past little while. Connects fans, leave a comment below. I love to read, react, and reply. Tell me about Josh Levo. Tell me more about Justin Bailey. And tell me what you think of all these, uh, you know, these smaller short-term signings. I love to read, react, and reply as always. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Enjoy the day. God bless. And go Connects go.